Hype Hour has had some huge announcements that have all come into this little blog that you see here. So I'm going to break them down because a lot of people are kind of confused and also just give my thoughts and my opinions. I was on the show and I did give my thoughts and opinions there, which were all legitimate. I see people coming in my comments on Twitter saying they weren't. So I'm actually going to explain some of these a little bit here. So firstly and most importantly, it is going to be duos FNCS all year, not trios. I'm a big fan. Let's be real of this because I have always thought that duos is one of the best game modes. I do love trios and I kind of evenly place them in the same spot, right? I feel like they're equally as good. I know a lot of people think prefer one or the other, but I'm pretty even on both. And I don't think Fortnite competitive is at a point where we can safely choose one game mode to have for the eternity of the future quite yet. So I'm happy with experimenting with a whole year of duos, seeing how it fares up against the whole year of trios that we just had. See people like it, see if it plays out better. And if not, we can always switch back to trios or go to another game mode, which I probably wouldn't like at all. Good thing to start, a good note on this, is that it starts in February. So the first FNCS is in February, and they're probably going to do four FNCS in the year, similarly to what they did last year. But again, that actually hasn't been laid out yet, so we'll just have to wait for some more information on that one. So with FNCS comes a format. So I want to firstly start by reading through a little bit of the blog here because that's important. So with the new game mode, we'll also be featuring an updated format for qualification in FNCS. We found that two qualifiers is the right number to narrow down to Fortnite's best region. So most of the time, well, up until the last one, there was three qualifiers. Then we just had two in that previous. One of the things that I don't like about this, I'm just going to say straight up, is that it's ran in the same week, as you can see down here. It says qualifiers will be run during the same week. Now, they've also reduced to three rounds rather than four, which for smaller regions is great. But for the large regions like EU, I think four rounds was a good fit. Maybe some of the games weren't of the highest quality, though. So potentially, I'm not actually upset with reducing down to three rounds. You know, maybe it was the right play just to, to put it back down. Because like I said, I don't know if we were getting the fullest out of them. But I think it's going to be really, really tough to get the thresholds. What I'm more concerned about is what's this going to look like in a week? Like, what is the daily structure going to look like if you've got six rounds of FNCS throughout one week? Like, I, I feel like the qualifiers are some of the best moments throughout FNCS, like the hype moments, the winning moments. And if you've only got two of them, that means you're probably going to have to be, what, like top 10 teams, maybe top 15 teams or something like that qualify, which leaves it pretty open. But then on the top of that, you're just doing it within like one week. I think this is something I'm not a big fan of, having it within the same week. But two qualifiers, like I wouldn't be too sad. But like I said, crushing it all together like that is probably going to feel rushed and probably have the players playing a lot in one day, unless it's like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday or something like that. Let's look at the semifinals. You're still going to qualify for the semifinals on series points, like it says here. Series points used for the semifinal advancement. All right, so they're combining it with the reboot round. So the heat and the, and the reboot round are kind of going into one. So you can see here, semifinals will now consist of only a single heat, a single lobby, like we mentioned, with matches on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in week two. So we'll clarify how that works later, but let's just assume it's just one heat for now. The winning duo of each semifinal match will continue to be rewarded with instant advancement to the finals. So combining that reboot round with the heats format that they used to have, which will make basically the heats really good to watch. Realistically, it's not that enjoyable in terms of like the way I like, I never enjoyed watching heats previously. I didn't enjoy at all watching the qualification this time for the Grand Royale. I think it's way too many reboot rounds. Now, I think this is a really good change because heats is really boring. Let's be real with it. Now, may be able to actually spice it up with the broadcast experience that will be able to watch every single game that will matter. The win will count. But on top of that, I hope every single one of these will be broadcast as well. If not, then that totally throws the purpose of it. But also, it matters about the play style. Like, usually, in particularly with the Grand Royale qualification system that we just saw, every match didn't matter until, like, the night, final moving zone. But with the fact that, say, there'll be six games and every single team can qualify through on consistency, that means, like, every single play style is now accountable, right? Like, the guys who are playing well will get through, which is really, really important. If you play well, you'll qualify through to the finals. And remember... A lot of the times with reboot round style games, if you have teams who are kind of rubbishy that make it through because it's like a lot of teams in heats and they just win a random game, they make it through to finals. That's usually pretty bad. But in this system, because there's only two qualifiers and a single lobby, so 33 teams, the chances of you having stinky teams in there is pretty low. They're going to be high quality teams already. So if someone gets a victory round, it's not like you're just letting a bad team through. Chances are they're going to be good anyway. So I think a lot of the problems are solved with this. And honestly, I just think this is going to be really good to watch. In particular over what has been pretty bad before. 
What's really important is after each daily session, now those vacant spots in the heats will be backfilled with the next inline duos on the series leaderboard and the process will start again. So on the Friday, you're going to get 33 teams in the series leaderboard. Let's say it's six games, so six Victor Royale teams go and then let's say it's like 10 teams of consistency, right? If you take all of those, that'll be 16 teams out. You'll take the next 16 teams on series leaderboard and it will start again. This is something we didn't have in the Grand Royale qualification system because Grand Royale was just like consistency over the whole weekend, which made it an absolute drag to watch. And it was just really boring if you didn't win a game. But now that it's like individual days, if you do well on this day or win a game in this, you will qualify through again. This is just rewarding the teams who are doing well to qualify through and making it good fun to watch. So. I'm all about it. This is probably, in my opinion, one of the best changes they've had. And that'll be held, obviously, in the second week as well, which is a really important note. Then another important, probably the most important note, is the finals have a week between, and that'll be on week three. So FNCS will be over in three weeks. A lot of people said that they didn't really like the FNCS was over this shortly. But in all honesty, in season eight, I like that we got straight to the finals. The finals is the best part of it, and dragging it out over four or five weeks is pretty bad. I just don't want it to feel rushed. And I think that the qualifiers being pushed into one weekend will probably make it feel kind of rushed, in my opinion. Uh, but we'll see how it actually plays out. I, like I said, I'm okay with it getting straight to the good stuff and having other tournaments throughout the year. That's kind of why it's been pushed into three weeks is so they can fit other tournaments like the big dream hacks that are in there, any third party tournaments. If you've ever been with a tournament organizer, you'll know there's no opportunities to get tournaments in because like basically FNCS and tons of other stuff just fill those slots. So I'm okay with it. I am not upset one bit. So for finals in week three, we're introducing another new piece of technology called the match point format. This will mean that a team may, may, being an important word, end the finals tournament window early and be crowned FNC's champions if they accomplish both of the following. Number one, reach the designated points threshold. Number two, earn two victory royales. So let's just say, for example, if we take EU, which I've got open here, Seti Kami Teak ended on 420 points. Now, the end of this tournament was really boring. Just straight up, season eight FNCS, the end of this was dull. And yes, there was issues with the games. The games kept getting restarted. That made it even worse. But the fact that Kami, Se, and Teak were so far in the lead, we just knew who was going to win by like game nine. And it's like, there's three games left. What was the point in even playing those out when we knew who was going to win? Obviously, you, know, you can say that teams down below may clutch up, but we'll come back to that later on, right? Just in terms of like who was winning, we knew Se, Kami, and Teak was going to win on the day. Now, if they're dominating that far in the lead, let's say this threshold back here that reached the designated points threshold was... 350 points so once they'd managed to cross that threshold they'd had an incredible performance they were so far ahead of everyone else the tournament would end early and this would allow like in particular if they hit the point threshold first then hit victory royal afterwards they win the game they win the tournament right it's a big victory moment because realistically like kami say teak didn't get that big we've won moment on broadcast or or on the day because they won so early because they've just been so so far ahead so one really important part about this is we want closing out an fncs tournament early to be an uncommon and exciting occurrence with major collect rights right so this basically means that say it's still 12 games as normal they want that normally to happen right just the usual we play the 12 games out whoever gets the most points will win like that's going to be the most common thing to happen like we've seen in the majority of fncs's but if one team is so far ahead that they manage to hit the points threshold and earn two victory rounds, which by the way, in duos, it's really difficult, then they will win early, right? It's an uncommon occurrence. That is what's important about this. And that'll bring so much more hype to those moments when you have a team who's just pulling really, really far ahead. So I know a lot of people didn't like this. I don't think they've truly understood because it was hard to get it across on the high power before you actually start to read into the differences, right? The smaller little bits, the fine print of how this is actually going to work and the fact that it's not just going to be every tournament we want oh this person to win maybe they end up putting it that way but i hope that is not the case and again this is really good for the viewers and i mean really good for the viewers because this will be so exciting to watch as a caster and analyst like it makes it infinitely more exciting to talk about to get storylines about for all these things for players if you're playing in these finals potentially not so good for you if it does happen right because you could essentially have lower points and someone hits the threshold or, or the two victory aisles before you. So, you know, and you know, you've, you could feel robbed of that win. And I'm sure players may not like that. There'll definitely be some kind of good reasoning for that somewhere. I understand. But if you're a viewer, you are going to love this format like 100%. 
So let's move on to the Cash Cups, because this stuff's really, really interesting. While we'll continue Cash Cups for Champions League's players, we'll also run simultaneous tournaments for contender and open league players to get more tournament and hype earning opportunities against other players in your division. Notice, really important note here. While we continue Cash Cups for Champions, Champions League players is Cash Cups, and it's for contender and open league, tournament experience and hype earning opportunities, right? So these lower leg league tournaments like contenders and opens are not getting cash rewards, right? So don't worry if you're a Champions League player playing cash cups, your money is still safe. You can still earn. Those will not be affected. The prize pools will not be moved down to the lower regions. It's basically what they're saying is open league and contenders league is going to have like hype cups essentially at every single cash cup, which kind of already happened on the trios cash cup so far in the last couple seasons. But in particular, I think the solos now will have, say there's a solo cash cup on the Sunday, just the same way it has been so far. That will also have a corresponding opens and contenders level hype cup that you can play instead if you've not made it, which is great. This is a really good way to get more players invested in the scene. Opens and contenders level tournaments always have a huge huge player pool almost like three or four times that of the champions like a lot of people don't understand how many people truly don't make it to champs out there and what a large population there is so this is massive this is actually a huge great change to get more people involved and competitive i am all for it another really really important note is we're making cash cups themselves more competitive with each consisting of two rounds where the second round will be held on a separate day in the week we think this will improve the quality and integrity of these tournaments while cash prizes are on the line so it's going to be similar to like the you know the ones we used to see a lot of the time so say it's top third i hope the, the second round is a set lobby that's one thing I'm, I'm really really hoping is true that it's only top 33 teams or if it's well, i'm thinking of trios it'll be duos probably so top 50 duos or top 100 players overall make it through then it's like a custom lobby like a finals that's fantastic so again we're Taking this back, I think, all the way back to Chapter 2, Season 2, this is what we had. A lot of people really like this. I thought the games weren't that good quality at the time, but we'll see. I think the games come a long way, and I think these could be great matches to watch. Like, I love set lobby games, so this is fantastic in particular when cash prizes are on the line. But the fact that they've said here, while cash prizes are on the line, makes me think that the Opens and Contenders tournaments are not two round. And I don't think they should be, honestly. If you're Open and, and Contenders tournaments, I don't think should be two round. Uh, but we'll have to see when they actually come around to it next year. Uh, but that's great. Huge, huge update. I think all of these Cash Cup changes are absolutely fantastic. Uh, and something that's not actually in the blog, but we talked about on the broadcast, was that there are Daily Cups returning as well. So Daily Cups will be returning turning in quarter two so that's basically april and after so it'll be like the summer season when all of the kids are off school and the game usually has the highest participation daily cash cups will return which people have been asking for that'll be two years when that actually comes back then so i'm hyped for that i'm gonna be playing every single daily cup 100 percent well maybe not every single one but most of them let's be real they were so so fun back then and that is such a good good addition all right, let's get to the part that I was most interested in. Third party in-person Fortnite tournaments. Let me just read it out first. Uh, we're excited to announce that we are once again accepting proposals for third party in-person events featuring Fortnite on a case-by-case -case basis. All approvals will be subject to app uh, applicable public health guidelines and restrictions that may be in place. We'll keep you updated on those plans as they are finalized. So basically what this means is lands are back next year. Uh, they've specifically said third party in-person events. So for me, that's like DreamHack obviously held the big LAN events that were there like DreamHack Anaheim. So if you apply, the reason they have the word application is because usually what happens is these companies will apply to Epic. And they, I think it's out if it's over $25,000 prize pool, they need approval from Epic to do it. They basically have to apply for it to be allowed a license to do a big LAN event. So now they're actually allowing people to do that with the way the world's opening up. So things like DreamHack Anaheim may happen. You know, if you think back to like ESL Cataviza Royale, that was like a third party tournament that was massive. Potential for like tournaments like ESL or like, well, I was going to say ESL to do that, but they are now DreamHack. So, well, that's the same thing. So yeah, yeah. DreamHack and ESL kind of companies, we're going to hopefully see, fingers crossed, big lands returning next year. Now, obviously, the things that I was hoping for, the hype that I had, the World Cup announcement that I was hoping for did not happen. Uh, and with this, it seems like they're still just trying to figure things out, right? If it's possible. I'm still inhaling that hopium right now, thinking that it's still a possibility for next year. They did not say we're not going to have World Cup next year. They're clearly opening things up to the world. But right now, there was no announcement for it. 
I was definitely sad because the fact that they didn't commit to just like saying we're gonna do it next year was obviously rough but I mean they're really really careful about the health and like I, I'm pretty sure Epic aren't even back in their own offices yet so they're also working from home they're really being really really careful about the worldwide situation uh and you know even if you think back to like one of the Valorant lands that just tempted there was obviously I think it was like a fake result that had gone through but there's still a lot of issues with COVID out there in the world uh regardless I'm sad not to hear like a World Cup announcement but the fact that lands are coming back is huge and get me there get me there get me in there <laughs> but right at the bottom again we've seen more competitive features so I kind of just talked about some of the things they've gone over here so creative modes and like arena fill all or the arena points format uh, broadcast features all this kind of stuff and also added cumulative points for day two events which is happening in Grand Royale if you've ever watched a uh, finals you'll see that two day events the two points never add up in the bomb so they finally changed that uh, a year and five months and two months after I had started asking about it among other improvements blah 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 you I can't even highlight here you can expect additional changes coming in 2022 this is important to tournament features the official broadcast hey that's me and the arena system now that's what I'm most interested about still concerned though because arena is still horrible we're all hoping hoping for a good arena rework because honestly it's not good it's just it's arena's not been good for a long time I've done tons of videos on it so many people have discussed it uh they're clearly looking to change things but they've made minor changes to things so far and it's not been very impactful so I'm hoping that they have big changes coming regardless hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot peace